Welcome to the Health Runner Podcast. My name is Uriel Kame, New York Times bestselling author, former professional athlete, and founder of Health Preneur, the world's leading company helping health and fitness experts start and scale high-end coaching businesses. If you want to attract more clients, learn how to convert them without feeling salesy, and deliver an amazing program for them on the back end, if you want to be inspired by what others just like you have gone through and how you can do the same no matter what life goes your way, then you are in the right place. Because every single week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we're going to be bringing you the best to help you take your knowledge and expertise to the next level with your health or fitness coaching business. And if you enjoy what you see and hear and would like to take your business to the next level, then I invite you to check out our free online training over at healthpreneurgroup.com forward slash training. And for now, let's get into today's episode. Welcome back to the podcast. Yuri here. Uh, we've got a mystery guest with us today because she's uh, not on camera, but she's here with us in spirit. Her name is Susan Gleaton, and uh, we can't get her camera working, so that's why she's not on the screen. But nonetheless, she's with us. We're going to have a great conversation, and let me give you some context about who Susan is. Again, she's one of our clients in our Health Business Accelerator program. She's a registered dietitian with an integrative and functional nutrition background. She helps her clients overcome the inconvenience, overwhelm, and anxiety often associated with GI and digestive disturbances by giving them the tools they need to get to the root cause of the problem and truly fix it. She's uh, an amazing person, lives in Dallas, Fort Worth area, and super excited to have her here on the podcast. So Susan, welcome. Thank you. All Thank right. you very so much. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. So let's uh, let's dive into this. Let's. Uh, what can I help you with in today's uh, today's discussion? Well, I had originally asked um, for more help, clarity, or just um, getting rid of bad thinking. I guess I'd say mm -hmm. on um, charging clients more, or actually more like charging clients what I'm worth. I guess that would be a better way to say it. Absolutely. But even better would be charging clients more in lines of the benefit that they're getting when they yep. work with me. Um, because there's a big disparity there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess I've always been for the underdogs. So I'm always, you know, trying to help out those who don't have. I guess you sure. So anyway, it's hard to charge a little bit more. Yeah, well, let, let's start there because that's a very that's, a, that's one of the biggest concerns that health experts have is how can I charge more when so and so is charging ten times less, or what if I alienate everyone, and what if people can't afford me? So let, let's let's talk that let's talk about that because as you know, that's that's a huge component of what we really recommend for you guys to do is, is charge a lot more is, is to outcharge the competition almost to, to be at the top yeah. of the mountain because there's very little competition up there, but also uh -huh. understanding there's less volume. So we're not right. saying, right. We all, listen, we all want to help everyone, right? We all, we want to change the world, but we have to write, Hey, there she is. She's on camera. It's working. Oh, I'm here. You did uh, you did something magical. <laughs> we are, we are now live on camera. Yeah, I got it now. <laughs> cool. So nice to see you. There we go. Thank you. Um, yeah, so like when you look at being at the top of the mountain, just like in a real mountain, there's less oxygen at the top. There's also less competition at the top, but there's also fewer prospective clients at the top because not everyone is willing to invest that amount of money. Now, when I say there's fewer clients, there are 7 billion people on the planet, right? And how many of those, there's got to be multiple billions who have digestive issues. And even if it was a couple million that could potentially be your clients, that's still more than enough clients for multiple lifetimes. Right. So let yeah. me ask you this. Someone who, so the clients that you've worked with in the past mm -hmm. or you want to work with moving forward, how much is it worth to them to no longer have their digestive issues? Okay. Like so, if you had to put a value on that. I don't think they could put a value on it because it's inconveniencing their life so much that it's, you know, I, I was just on a Facebook group for IBS and mm -hmm. this is hugely inconveniencing. They can't get to work. They feel like everybody's talking about them, you know? And so, yeah, yeah I don't think you could put a dollar value on it. And so, so here's the fun part is, would you agree, Susan, that the intangibles in life are the most valuable? Like health, happiness, joy, relationships? Yep, I yeah. sure would. Now the challenge is how do we quantify those? Right. And so right. this is where 
you know, you have to work your magic with the prospective clients to quantify their problem. So this, okay. the person saying, like, it's, it's really embarrassing or I'm missing work or whatever those frustrations are, mm -hmm. you need to be able to lead them down a conversation that is going to help them internalize, wow, this is actually costing me a lot of money. Because right. it's, it, no, nobody can give you an accurate estimation of how much it would be worth to no longer have the problem. If they said a million dollars, that may be too much, that may be too little. But if they said $5,000, I guarantee it's way more than that, right? Right. Yeah. So we need to ask them a question that is going to get them to, in their minds, like, oh my God, that makes a lot of sense. So for instance, if you know that one of your clients or several of your clients are not able to, you know, go to work because uh -huh. of the GI distress. Right. Um, hey, Susan, like, well, you not being able to go to work, what's that cost you? Um, a raise. Um, it's costing... You know, I'm not as productive. There you go. Cool. So you're telling me that if you can't do your work properly, you're not going to get a raise. You're not going to be as productive. And if you're not as productive, you're probably not going to be performing at your best. And, you know, hopefully this never happens. But again, you never know. Maybe your bosses, your managers, you know, they're not approving of your performance. That could lead to some type of termination down the road, which is, you know, God forbid, we don't want that to happen. Um, but you recognize the cost of, uh, of not being able to perform as, at, at your best. Is that right? Uh -huh. Yep, absolutely. Uh -huh. So let, let's, just, let's just use the example of the raise, for example. Like, what okay. if you, how much of a raise could you potentially get if you actually did your best work? Well, I'm going to have to guess here. <laughs> sure. whatever, you, like, whatever you want to say. A corporation in a while. Um, let's say that's going to be um, 2000 a month. Two thousand a month. All right, so two thousand dollars a month. That's what twenty four thousand dollars in a year. Right. So what you're telling me is that you are potentially missing out on twenty four thousand dollars per year because of this digestive issue. Yeah, that's I uh, guess so. When you add it up, yes. Right. So see what I'm doing here, Susan? Is I'm I'm trying to quantify the problem. Okay. Yeah. And 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 not and just for everyone listening and watching, not everyone is going to relate this to their job. Right. So you need right. to figure and out a way where I they're don't saying my kids. Yeah, like so. Give me the, give me another example of how does what's a symptom of how this is showing up in the person's life? Okay, I'm afraid to travel um, with a, a group of people because they're going to have to stop the car all the time because of me. Cool. All right. So you're obviously apprehensive of traveling with other people. Um, right. Like so, let's let's assume that you can't travel with your friends anymore. What what would that mean to you? Um, they're going to do things that I can't do. They're going to be talking about going places that I didn't get to go. Um, I also want to do some airline travel and I'm scared to death of it. Sure. Sure. And why does that matter to you that you're not able to travel with your friends and miss out on these opportunities? Well, because I finally got to the point in my life where I can, because my kids are grown. And, um, so this is what I've always dreamed of. Cool. So you not being able to do that, you've got the, the empty nest, the kids are out, you have the freedom and time to travel now, but you're held back because you're, you're afraid of having these frequent pit stops. Yeah. So what's the worst thing that could happen if you, like what's, what's that cost you not to, to travel with those friends? Well, um, just staying home and not enjoying life. Just loss of a dream, let's say. Not in not having the um, maybe retired life that I thought I would have. Cool. And what is, tell me a bit more about that retired life. What does that dream life look like for you? Okay. I'm having to say this for my ideal client. Sure, yeah, okay. We're just kind of, we're just role playing. We're just having some fun, right? But for my ideal client, it would be um, finally getting to travel and do stuff because you couldn't afford it when your kids were little and, or in high school, you can't afford it. And now you have friends and you can go places with them, but your health issues, you know, a very embarrassing one is getting in the way. Yeah. yeah. So what, do you, what are you going to do instead without, without being able to do all the travel? So what am I going to do instead? Um, well, rent, or no, buy a travel trailer, and then it's just my husband and I travel. Yeah. There you go. Doesn't sound as, doesn't sound as much fun. Yeah. <laughs> 
it, it has its good points and its bad points. Sure, sure. But so, it's limited. Yeah, okay, so let's come back to just like our, our conversation here for a sec. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to take them down a path of we want them to associate the, we, we need them to associate the cost of not being able to do something, right? And you, again, there's obviously questions we have in our script that can help them, uh, help you navigate that and get there a bit more effectively. But we want to help them understand that we need to quantify the unquantifiable. That's pretty much what we're trying to get at. Yeah. Because by yeah. the time, Hard. and we've talked about this, is by the time they get to your program and you're walking them through what all this looks like, you're going to tie back in like, hey, you know that number one, that, that problem you told me about earlier where you wouldn't be able to travel and because you were afraid of taking frequent pit stops and so forth? Well, here's what you need to do to fix that. You need to kind of seal the gut, heal the gut, whatever you want to call it. And that's the first thing you need to do, right? And then you okay. can uh-huh. segue into your program. So again, we're talking a bit more in the prescription phase here of the call. Right. Uh-huh. But as we're doing that, you have to bring back the number, like the big problems, like the, the big pain points that we're really hammering uh, in the earlier part of the call in the discovery. Bring those back in, introduce a quick little prescription, and the prescription is not like how to do it. It's here's what needs to happen, right? So you need to heal your guts. We're not going to say, okay, have aloe vera and fish oil. We're not going to go into the specifics. Okay. We're giving them like here's the high level big picture of what, what needs to happen in order for that problem to be solved once and for all. And then you're gonna segue into talking a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit more about your program. So uh, we've got this, you know, based on everything you've told me, here's what I'd recommend for you. It's my program called XYZ. And it's what uh, my top clients who are very much like yourself end up doing. And you would then talk about the promise. The promise is here's the outcome you're gonna get from our program. Mm-hmm. Then you walk them through the process of how that all helps. But during this process, the key is that in their mind, the value of this is infinitely higher than the price they're going to see. So what's, um, I mean, again, what, what were you historically charging before we started working together? Um, including the test, because I highly rely on the um, MRT test. Mm-hmm. So including that test, it was 1300 Okay, so that's still a decent, that's a fair amount. It's not like super cheap uh it's also not super expensive and how long of a program is it um eight weeks okay so i think that's yeah, very then, reasonable um, it was uh three months i shortened it to two months but then they have access to me for an extra month cool awesome and what are what do you feel you should be charging for this program well I would actually, to make it my ideal perfect program, like one of our modules was, I would be adding two other tests to it so I can help them better. There you and go. I'm going to add um, just probably about $500, just so, my cost. So we'll call it $3,000 as a program? So I was thinking about $3,000 actually, yeah. Good. Minimum. So okay. it, I, it more than doubled. It went from thirteen hundred to three thousand. Yeah, but you said so something that's really, yeah. You said something really important there. You said uh-huh. talking about including two extra tests, which is actually going to help the client get a better outcome. Absolutely. That's guys listening, watching. That's the big thing you need to understand about this. It's not about adding a zero. It's not about just doubling or tripling or ten times your prices. It's about thinking what would have to be true if I only got paid after this client got a result? What would I have to provide for them? What type of service, experience, whatever, would they have to have to truly solve this problem? And so if it's two extra tests, hey, it's two extra tests, Yeah. Right? If it's you showing up at their door and making their meals, hey, maybe there's an exclusive VIP package, it's $100,000, right. not everyone's gonna take oh, yeah, that. Yeah. But, no, <laughs> that just works too. Yeah, yeah. So, does that make sense, Susan? Yes, um, yeah, it, it does. Yeah, so like to make my ideal thing, it would just cost a little bit more, yeah. but it would serve them so much better. For sure. So during the call, the goal is to build the value of your program, but also to remind them that the real cost is not $3,000. The real cost is not doing anything, is not okay. working with you, because now it's at $24,000 per year promotion. It's the travel they're not gonna be able to do. It's the suffering, it's the embarrassment, it's all the frustration. That's the real cost. And if you ask the person, listen, let me ask you, all of those things that I just mentioned, 
if I could solve those for you, would it be worth more than $3,000? Like, oh, I don't think anybody in their right mind would say no to that. Mm -hmm. If they did, obviously, they're obviously not committed to doing the work. Mm -hmm. So you just want a position to say, like, listen, like, I understand if someone says, yeah, it's a little bit too much money. Listen, I understand this isn't cheap. I also understand it's not overly expensive. Um, and, and, and would you agree with me that the reason that it is what it is is because I can help you really get a, a great outcome and you have to make a decision. What's most important to you, the cost or the outcome that you want? Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if yeah. you want to save money, you're going to have to compromise on the outcome. And sadly, I can't help you do that. I would love to give this to you for free. I would love to give this to you at half price. But if I do that, it's not serving you because I'm only able to give you a fraction of what you really need to create the transformation you want. And the last thing I want is for you to say, you know what, this is not the right thing for me. And you give up on your dream and you deal with the next half of your life in frustration or worse yet, you find another alternative that might be cheaper that actually costs you more in the long run in terms of time, money, and frustration. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I totally get it. Yeah. yeah. And then come to think of it, I was thinking while you were talking, the cost about $3,000 is probably an average family vacation or so maybe. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, it's, so remember we talked about selling with emotion, closing with logic, mm -hmm. right? So at this point of the call, it's really about logically in your head, how can $3,000 be more expensive than all of the suffering you've been going through? Yeah. That's pretty mm -hmm. much what we have to have them realize. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that help? Right. Yeah. yeah, that helps. That helps. Okay. So what's, what's been the big insight that you've had from our, our discussion here on the pricing side of things? All of this I already knew. Um, um, I guess confirmation that making the, the whole package, I guess, or program better by including more tests, you know, getting all the pieces that I need mm -hmm. um, is a good idea. I mean, I was just making the, the absolute, like if I had the best tools to work with, what would it yeah. be? Um, and why not do that? And, you know, in the long run, it's not adding that much cost to them. Exactly. Or the value that they're getting. Yeah. I mean, in three years down the road, most people are going to have no clue. They're not going to remember what they paid, but what yeah. they will remember is that their life has been transformed. Right. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, just like when we started our health business accelerator workshop, it looked a little bit different than it does now. We actually didn't include the tech build out. And then we realized that, Hey, well, what if we could build out all the tech for our clients and we added that in. Right. So that was part of one of the reasons why we increased the price is like, Hey, we're going to take care of all the tech for you. And it's like, okay, that's going to help our clients help you guys get better results, get faster results, uh, be less overwhelmed, less frustrated. And so these are the things that as you're building out your program, if you're watching, listening to this, I want you to think about it. It's not, I get, I get so much heat. It's so funny uh, on our Facebook ads about premium pricing. It's like, how dare you charge more for people in their health? And I'm like, it's not about that. It's not about only speaking and helping wealthy people. That's not what this is about. You don't have to be wealthy to a four to $3,000 program, especially if you've got a payment plan, right? right? It's simply a clarification of values. Everyone's spending money anyways. No one's ever giving you their last dollar. So if they're going to spend $3,000 on a TV or a vacation, they have the money or they'll find it. People right. will find the money just like they will find the time if it matters to them. Right. So, right. yeah. Right. And actually, if you didn't have the tech build out in your program, I probably wouldn't have joined. You see, there we go. <laughs> right? <a> new turtle. <laughs> totally, totally. Awesome. Awesome. So we've got uh, another few minutes. Is there anything you want to kind of touch on in the next couple of minutes that we have together? Well, you know, one thing that you did a podcast on um, where I mo heard you most recently was on being able to say like what I do really succinctly and I stink at that and I have worked on that for years mm -hmm. and it always comes out like really bad so if somebody asks me what do I do I'm like oh I'm a dietitian and I help people with digestive health and it just downhill from there <laughs> So you know, it's funny. This is a very common issue. That's why we say like the platform isn't what matters. It doesn't matter if you're using Facebook ads or YouTube ads. It's, it's the psychology. It's the messaging, right? And that's what we really focus on so much of is it's not about, you know, do I use my iPhone to shoot a video or a, a Canon DSLR to shoot? It's, it doesn't matter. It's like what comes out of your mouth is what matters most. Yeah. So, 
with respect to what you just said, like I'm a dietitian. As soon as you say dietitian, you put yourself in a box. I did, yeah. Right? And, and they okay. didn't hear anything after that. Yeah. And I've got to learn to, to, to not say that. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is, because most people don't have a framework for how to properly tell people what they do, they, they revert back to the label. Like, I'm a dietitian, yeah. I'm a health coach, I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer. Right. And it, it doesn't allow you to stand out. And that's the big thing is we want to be able to stand out in a way where you are in a category of one instead of in a category of many others. Okay, yeah, got that. So yeah. one of, and we, you've, have you gone through this exercise in module one? Um, I, I went through module one and did every exercise, but I'm not recalling the particular one you're talking about. So this about. would tie back into the promise of your program. For instance, I help target market achieve certain outcomes. Oh, oh yeah, okay, right? yeah. I did that. It's just when you're talking about um, IBSD, it's just not real conversational. Sure. Like, again, this is not like you don't have to be, it's not like you're going to be at cocktail parties all the time, like networking and doing all this kind of stuff, right? It's, it's, it's just coming up in conversation. For instance, if someone asks me like what I do, it's a very hard question for people to answer in general. Like, what do you do? And so we default back to the label. I'm a lawyer. Well, right. great. Thank you. So is sort of a million other people. So what I tell people is, well, I help other health experts start and scale high-end coaching businesses that, trans that, 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 sorry, that transform people's lives. That's yeah. what I do. And so you want to be able to articulate. So what happens is when you say that, what's the, what's the next question the person might be thinking in their mind when you say something like that? Um, I don't know. It usually ends the conversation right there. Sure. Or they might be thinking. <laughs> so like, what they might be thinking is I hate dietitians or what's IBSD or, you know, I, I actually never get that far to the IBSD. I never have said that. Sure. So, um, I, I don't know. Most people don't care about your, your label, right? Like they, they care about, Hey, they care about themselves. So it's like, Hey, can you help right. me? Cool. That, Hey, what you just said sounds like it could help me. So what a lot of people who might be not everyone, but again, let's assume you're talking to your target audience, the right people will be like, huh, that's interesting. Tell me more. Or how do you do that? And that's the doorway into talking about your process and your dream come true system. And then obviously how you can help them. But it all starts with that one sentence that really succinctly speaks to the benefit of what they're looking to achieve. So right. yeah, just, uh, just work on that. I don't know. Yeah, I have to work on that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> the, fewer, the fewer words we use to, to talk, the more time it takes. Right. If we, if we just rambled on for like minutes on end, I do this and this and this and this and this, it's like, okay, you have to put some thought into that. And that's why the, like, like with a title, there's only two or three words in a title. You have to think a lot about what that title is going to, what that title is going to be for maximum impact. And the same thing with this, what we call a unique value proposition, which is yeah. what you do, how you help people in one sentence. Right. And I would right. just revert back to uh, the promise formula in module one. Right. Okay. And just clean that up. And again, remember, you're speaking only to people who want to hear from you, at least in the form of your Facebook ads and so forth. So even if you're at a cocktail party or on the airplane talking to someone beside you, you can still, you can tell them that. Um, maybe water it down. It's like I help people with digestive issues instead of like yeah. specific IB, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's why you just say it's digestive. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Does that make sense, Susan? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I have actually never gotten that far with digestive. That's hard to spit out to. That's right. That's right. I help people prevent their colon from being removed out of their body. Yeah. <laughs> right. I usually say I help people reduce inflammation. And then that's just too general. They don't yeah. know what. Yeah. You know. A lot of people don't know what inflammation is. They don't know symptomatically what that means. So it's, uh, yeah. I, I would just clean that up, specify it a bit more to digestive stuff. And then you become a bit of a category of one, right? Like I am the person, I am the expert, the world's leader, or the most famous in Texas uh, for this target audience with that problem. Right. Okay. Cool. I'll work on that. All awesome. Right. So has this, been, has this been a helpful discussion for you? Oh, yeah. It has been helpful. Confirmed yeah. some things that, you know, already suspected or new. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. Um, so for everyone watching or listening, like you came into our program and you had mentioned that uh, like you were feeling pressured from within to do like all the Facebook stuff, the Instagram, like the newsletter, all the, a, a bunch of stuff. And, and, and you just didn't make, it didn't make sense to you that it was going to really 
you know, like that was going to be the, the, the model for you to follow. So for anyone who's, who's watching or listening to this, who's thinking like, man, I've been doing all this stuff and nothing's really coming to fruition and they're considering working with us. What, what would you tell them? Well, I would tell them, I feel like somebody finally has my back. Where before I felt like I was just kind of floundering. I really, I had some direction, but I really didn't know what to do and, um, and didn't have enough of somebody just saying, yes, this is good. No, scratch that, you know, or the technology end. I haven't gotten that there yet, but, um, and I just felt totally overwhelmed with Facebook, Instagram, you know, email, whatever, very overwhelmed with all that. And so, um, haven't gotten that far in your program yet, but I do feel that somebody's going to have my back and is going to be, um, just guiding me through so that I'll be a success instead of all this work and nothing happens. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And that's very true because um, we do have your back. And for everyone listening and watching, you're relatively new. I mean, you don't have everything deployed yet. You're not enrolling clients through our, our, our process yet, but you're doing the work. And once you're ready to deploy, we've got your back. We'll be there to support you and help you, give you feedback on what's working and what isn't. And it's very tough to do that when you're on your own, right? So right. That's, uh, we're super happy to have you with us. And thank you for, for joining me today. It's been a lot of fun. All right. Thank you. All right, guys, hope you've enjoyed this one. Hey, thanks so much for joining us on this episode of the Health Printer Podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, here's what I'd like you to do right now. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the Health Printer Podcast on iTunes. And while you're there, leave us a rating or review. It helps us get in front of more people and change more lives. And if you're ready to start or scale your health or fitness coaching business and want to start getting in front of more people, working with them at a higher level without trading time for money, then I invite you to check out our free seven-figure health business blueprint training, totally free right now, and you can do so at healthpreneurgroup.com forward slash training. For now, thank you so much for joining us. Continue to be great, do great, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.